Well, the basis of antithyroid hormones, these are basically hormones that will slow down the production of thyroid hormone. Do you understand? So, antithyroid drugs, sorry, all right? Uh, sorry, uh, antithyroid drugs, all right? These are drugs that will slow down the production of thyroid hormone in the body. So, one of these drugs, from the overview that we made, we said it is thioamide, all right? So, what is the pharmacology of thioamides? Basically, they are mode of action. Right, so if there are different drugs that are basically uh, present, uh, preventing uh, the formation of thyroid hormone in large amounts, all right. Uh, but these drugs they don't act the same way, all right. They have different levels at which they attack the pathway that actually uh, is a pathway for production of this thyroid hormone, all right. So in these drugs, we'll be talking about the word thioamides. Talking about how thioamides actually prevent the production of what thyroid hormone in excess. So first of all, we're starting with the examples of these thioamides. I would say that examples of thioamides include what metimazole, habimazole, and propyl thioracil. All right, and all of them they have uh, they are the ways that uh, people actually um, they are short forms in which they are written. Okay. But anytime I come across the short form, I'll, I'll, I'll always say it in full, okay? Because I'm a student too, and I like to be saying it so that it will actually stick in me. So these um, thioamides, they are, first of all, they are what sulfur containing molecules. Now, metimazole is what's 10 times more potent than what propyl thioracil, all right? And it is administered what? PO. PO is what? PAUS. It means that it is administered through the oral route of administration, the oral route of drug administration, okay? The CBZ, CBZ is what? Cabimazole. Cabimazole is a pro-drug, all right? It's like a precursor. So if it is administered, it will convert to metimazole, right? So we say that it is converted to metimazole after administration. Now, cabimazole and metimazole exhibit similar pharmacokinetics profile, all right? So what is pharmacokinetics again? Basically, the effect of the body on the drug, okay? So how the body will react to the drug is basically similar in cabimazole and metimazole, all right? So looking at this again, these are two amides. I could see the level which the two amides actually attack the pathway that actually forms the thyroid hormone, all right? That's what we'll be moving on to talk about now. So the metimazole is... Uh, nearly completely absorbed enterically after metabolism in the gastrointestinal tract, okay? So, and first pass through the liver, okay? So, since it is um, nearly totally absorbed enterically after metabolism in the GI tract and the first pass through the liver, we say that the metimazole does exhibit significant inter-individual uh, variability in serum levels, okay? So, excretion occurs through the hepatic through the renal, through the gastrointestinal tract, through the feces, and through the bowel. Propyl thioracil, 80% to 85% of it bounds the plasma protein, all right? So, uh, propyl thioracil, that's PTU, has an absorption half-life of 60 to 75 minutes, and the elimination half-life is approximately one hour, all right? So we're still building up, we're still building up, we're about to hit it, which is the mechanism of action of these two amides. So mode of action is not fully understood. So it's an area of research, you can do a research on that and we can hand you the Nobel Prize. So they prevent organification of iodine and coupling of what thyroglobulin molecules by inhibition of what thyroperoxidase catalyzed reaction. So you could see where uh, these uh, two amides are basically attacking this pathway, and it's from this pathway, it's from this side that we have the what? The processes of organification and processes of what? Coupling coming in, all right? So if they are attacking the pathway at that level, then they are preventing organification and what? Um, coupling, all right? So in addition, proprietor uracil reduce the D iodination of what? T4 to T3 in peripheral tissues, right? Because you know that T4 is not really active. 
So we have to actually remove one iodine from it, that's deiodination. When you re remove one iodine from it, it becomes T3, all right? And T3 is the active component. So what are the side effects of two amides? Uh, we said that they have common adverse effects like what? Neutropenia, that's increase in neutrophils in the body. There's GI tract distress and nausea. There's maculopapular, what? Puritic rash. There's a drug fever, there's pains in your joints, there's headache, there's agranulocytes. Okay, that, this is rare. This one now was the common adverse effect, but rare adverse effects still include what? Agranulocytosis, there's what? Lymphadenopathy, and there's what? Exfoliative dermatitis, right? So guys, this is it about the pharmacology of two amides antithyroid drugs. Basically, we discussed the uh, types and we also discussed the uh, mode of action. Alright, so see you guys in the next tutorial and bye for now.